Um, that's very nice. Thank you. Can you hear me? So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you that I'm, I have the opportunity to present some of the work that we do at Padma. Um, some of you may have heard the presentation of Dr. Schwaber this morning. Padma is a company in Switzerland, and we produce Tibetan formulas in Switzerland. So, um, the topic today is um, to go a bit deeper into the issue of comparing old knowledge, using new scientific methods to describe the old knowledge, and how to translate concepts of the old Tibetan uh, medicine system uh, in today's uh, biomedical uh, world. So our, our approach is to, build bridge, to try to build bridges between these two medical systems. Uh, briefly, uh, Padma Company was founded uh, almost 50 years ago in Switzerland, and since then we produce these, thank you, um, uh, these complex Tibetan medical formulas according to the, uh, the standards of, of Western quality standards, GMP. And uh, as a portfolio, we have, uh, we have uh, some medicinal products registered in Euro most in European countries. And we also produce formulas that we bring to the market as food supplement. Um, so this means that we have almost 50 years of experience with these formulas from this uh, system of medicine in the Western context, that means in the medical scientific context, but also in the regulatory and uh, law, the context of the law, of the medic uh, medicine law, so we, we move in this context. So I will speak about this mostly. Um, what is necessary to bring a Tibetan formula or any complex formula from a traditional uh, medicine system uh, to a Western country as a medicine? Um, in essence, it's a process of reduction. So first, you have to choose a formula. When you choose it, you have to think about the comp components. Are the components allowed in, in the West? Uh, are they suitable? Then you have to fix the formula. You have, sometimes there are in, the, in the literature, there are different variations of a formula, different components, maybe some different proportions of the components. And then you have to decide how exactly we, you want to do this formula. Then very important is a quality concept. Quality is one of the three main subjects in uh, medicine registration. So how do you analyze the ingredients? How do, do you analyze the finished product? <coughs> and the very important thing is, what is this product for? The indication. And I will speak a little, a little bit more about this. So very important in the indication is we have to use language. European language, according to the country where, where the product is made for, which is understandable for the people living there. So when we look at the different concepts, everybody knows, everybody here knows Tibetan medicine, which has an integral view of the body, of the organism, the systems are interrelated, and uh, the, the functional fields are connected. And the Western medicine has a little bit more a mechanistic view, Nowadays, of course, uh, also Western medicine has uh, learned that not every organ works by itself, but is interconnected. But in, in general, it's more separated fields. So you have a gastroenterologist, you have a, a psych psychiatrist, and uh, an oncologist. So everybody has his own field uh, as a specialist. Uh, I want to take the example of the formula Padma 28 because it's the formula that we have worked the longest and the most with, and some of you may even know it. So it's based on, a, on the formula Gabu 25. It has 22 ingredients and it stems from the Buryat branch of the Tibetan medicine. So we heard that different regions have a specialized um, kind of Tibetan medicine or add-on um, specialty, so like Tuvian Tibetan medicine, this would be Buryatian Tibetan medicine. Um, from a point of view of the Tibetan medicine, you could describe this formula as a cooling formula, which improves, improves blood circulation 
and is good in chronic heat disease infections and for wound healing. When we look at the Western point of view, what do we know about the formula? How do we describe it, its activity? So we know it's anti-inflammatory, antioxidative. Also, uh, it uh, modulates the immune function and improves uh, blood circulation. <coughs> and in the, when first this formula was described with Western terms, um, it looked like this, and it was, it was in the 60s, and it was characterized um, according to the effects that the formula has, and also um, there were given some examples for indications in Western language um, according to Western medicine um, system. In translation, we have the English translation of the um, proposed indications, uh, mostly chronic and acute inflammation, infection, also respiratory diseases, and here we have uh, circulatory disorders, and quite a lot of different things from a, from a Western medicine point of view. It's quite a wide spectrum of diseases. Now here on the right side is written the indication that is stated in the package insert of the product. So when the patient buys the product, he reads this indication. The formula Padma 28 is for circulatory disorders, with symptoms such as, and then some examples. When we compare the original description and the indication that is approved by the authorities, it's, you see it's a, quite a reduction. And actually only this one point is reflected in the, in the indication that is approved by the authorities. So when you remember the picture from before, this, this funnel, which is a reduction of the, of the formula and the, to produce um, a product for the Western market, this is form of reduction too, in the indication. Actually, in Switzerland and in other European countries, the formula is mostly used for uh, circulatory disorders, which are caused by atherosclerosis. So I don't know about the time, so I will skip this one. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> atherosclerosis. Um, in Western medicine, it's the, the stiffening of the arteries and uh, the, circul the circulation is diminished, so it's pain. Um, and it's essentially a, a disease of older age. Uh, in Western medicine, there used to be the idea that this is a, a degenerative disease, that it's um, a deposit of fats like uh, blood fats and cholesterol in the arteries, so it's just... Uh, called inactive passive disease. But since, let's say, half of last century, um, it, is no, it is known now, especially it's known that it's uh, an inflammatory disease, a chronic disease, but it's an active disease which takes place in the vessel wall, in the wall of the arteries. Um, down here, I won't go into details, but it depicts the pathologic processes that go on when uh, atherosclerosis develops. So since it's chronic inflammatory, inflammatory, but still you don't feel it, you don't feel how this develops in the body. So you will feel the effects when an artery is closed, then you will feel it. But uh, during the development, this can go on for decades, you don't feel it, and that is why it's called a silent inflammation. It's an inflammation but uh, it's silent, you can't uh, see, you, you can't recognize it clinically. So, um, silent inflammation is an, a term that is used maybe 10, 15 years ago. Herbert Schwab told you about this already. And it is recognized as a cause for many diseases, not only atherosclerosis, but also other diseases uh, have an inflammatory cause. And look at this, that's the... the cover page of uh, Time magazine, it was in 2004, and they said inflammation, wow, it's a killer, it's, it's like it was new. It was known before, but then it, it came to the public uh, knowledge, actually, that this inflammation is the cause of many chronic diseases. So it's more than a blood vessel anomaly, it's, um, it's a disease of the immune system, too. Now, let's get on. Very important in atherosclerosis, of course, are the risk factors. What are they? Uh, blood fats and cholesterol, um, dietary uh, problems, so eating fat, uh, too little physical um, 
exercise. Of course, genetic predisposition, male sex and increasing age, and also other diseases, other inflammatory diseases, they, um, pr they make a, a person prone to also have atherosclerosis. So these all can be seen as pro-inflammatory factors. They increase inflam inflammation in the body. And when you, when we look, what, what is hidden fever? You know better than me, but um, actually you may describe it as a multi-layered disease where all of the different uh, energies are out of balance. And it's an excess of heat in the body, but it's not very visible at first glance. At first glance, the appearance is more like a lung or a bacon disease. So now on the right side, I will uh, list some ca characteristics of what we say a silent inflammation or atherosclerosis. It's a complex and multifactorial disease, inflammatory. We have uh, risk factors like obesity, fatty food, immobility, lack of physical exercise are also risk factors, and uh, chronic inflammations, other diseases with inflammation are also a risk factor. So let's just take some arrows and compare. So of course, multi-layered and complex, both both uh, silent inflammation and also the hidden fever are complex and in, involve many factors. No, it's not just a simple disease. Then we have excess of heat. We can translate this into inflammation. So it's an inflammatory disease, atherosclerosis, and also the other inflammation, inflammatory diseases, they, uh, they promote atherosclerosis. When we look at, um, at these two, obesity, fatty food, high blood fat levels, immobility, um, this reminds very much of the symptoms of, a, of too much bacon. So I think it's fair to say that, that those uh, compare to, to this last point of uh, hidden, um, hidden fever. So it's a comparison that I find is quite compelling. Well, it's not a proof, but it's a way to show how can we compare, how can we try to compare these um, different uh, systems. <coughs> now back to uh, Padma 28. We have, uh, since more than 40 years, there is, some, uh, there is research about this formula. Okay, and as I said, some anti-inflammatory um, antioxidant immune modul modulating and cell protecting activities. And we have known that, uh, we have shown that these effects, they act on very different levels in the process of patho um, uh, atherosclerosis. And these effects are all proven with, uh, with experimental studies. So let's go to the conclusion. So the translation, or at least a descriptive, uh, descriptive uh, comparison is possible, in my opinion. And for this, of course, a, a profound knowledge of both systems is necessary. So I can't compare something to something I don't know really in depth about. Uh, furthermore, I think it is a very necessary process when we want to bring formulas from Tibetan medicine or any other traditional uh, medicine system to Western countries, we must, we must describe them in the, in the language that the people understand. And this not, is not only a linguistic problem, it's not enough to translate into English or German or French. We must translate the concepts because people in Europe, they don't know about Lung and Bacon. You have to explain. So we have to use all, our, um, all what we can to make the people understand the concepts. And for this, we have to, to understand and to try to find comparisons that are um, not known to these people. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually my contribution. Thank you. I showed this one uh, slide with the fir when the first these formula were translated or described. And these formula that Padma produces, they stem from a, a, a list of formulas, which was from a Tibetan doctor coming to Switzerland with, from Buryatia to St. Petersburg to Poland to Switzerland. And in this list, this was the, the number 28. So it is the 28th formula of this collection. That's why it's called 28 and not because it has 28 ingredients, but 
this can be confusing sometimes. Thank you very much.